Okay, way back in version 6, I did a video in c which I converted uh, some lettering to an outline stitch so that it could be used for quilting. Um, you could also use that outline stitch to create an applique for lettering too. So this technique is quite um, useful. Now it's very simple to do. So you need to be in Art Canvas. We're now in version 8. So we've got a lot um, of a lot more tools to work with. So it move to Art Canvas and then come over to your lettering tool and select it. And just type the word you'll need to, once your cursor has changed, you'll need to left click onto the canvas to get a cursor showing where you can type. And just type the word you want to um, convert. So I'm going to type the word Noel. So you could use this on a Christmas project. And you'll see it has what looks like selection handles around it. But while you're in the lettering tool, you're still in lettering editing mode. So you can, um, while you've got this tool, you can backspace and retype and um, do all those sort of things. But in order to change the font or to change the size, you need to go out of the lettering tool and into the selection tool. So just come up to your pick tool, your blue arrow, and you'll get the normal selection handles around here now. So you can decide on your size. So I'm going to go to 200 millimeters. I'm going to make this, oh, well, actually, um, 150 millimeters. That will make it quite large. But you decide what size you want it for your project. So just up here in your um, toolbox, transformation toolbox, you can change the size. And because I've got my lock locked, I only need to put in my width of 150 millimeters and it will transform proportionately. So I'm going to tab and tab again, or I could have just hit enter and I would have had the same result. Okay, so when you're choosing that size, of course, consider the size of your hoop as well so you might want to make it just a fraction smaller if your it won't be accommodated in your hoop all right now i'm not really fond of this um font so i'm going to change it so while it's still selected i can come up here to the fonts and there's a drop down menu now all the fonts that are installed on your computer will show up there we go, it's just taking a little while. And as you scroll down, your little um, preview will show here. And also, if I had have moved it, you may be able to notice that underneath the word is actually changing as well, so you can see. Now, I am going to use one called Lucidia um, Calligraphy. There it is. Now, if you haven't got that font in your list of fonts, you will need to download it. It is a free font. You can ready, readily get it from the internet. Download it. It'll come in a zip file. And once you've got the zip file, you'll need to unzip it. Then right-click on the new fold file that opens, the new TrueType font file, and click on left-click on Install. You will need to restart your software in order for it to appear. Um, okay, my, something's going a little bit haywire here. But anyway, I'll choose Lucidia Calligraphy. And so now I've got this lovely font here. Now, I just want an outline. And this is actually lettering. If I was to choose an outline now, if I was to um, outline the lettering, let me just... Um, left click on the cross over here in our color bar which will remove the fill and right click on the black so that I get an outline so I've got an outline there now um, so that should just convert if you look up here it's still showing the size of the lettering but we'll see if that will convert without changing converting to curves one thing you often have to do is convert lettering to curves to achieve different effects but I think we should be okay just going through now the thickness of that outline um, I'm defaulting to hairline thickness you only want to go up to two millimeters maximum if you want a single outline but just try that so we'll hit the convert button and see what happens so the convert icons up the top here and yes I've got a lovely outline as quick as that 
of the lettering. So I didn't need to convert to curves um, or anything like that. Just all I needed to do was create an outline in Art Canvas for my lettering. Now, as I said, if your outline in Art Canvas, the default is thicker, then you may need to convert to curves so you can alter the thickness of the outline. But um, it needs to be hairline or up to two millimeters in order to get a running stitch outline. But it's as simple as that. But we can improve on this a little bit because if I go out of True View, uh, let me have a look here. We've actually got, are they jump stitches? I think they're just jump stitches. Yes, so that's all right. We've got individual objects. We need to go to individual objects. Ah, but that's seeing each letter as an individual object. That's a bit of a problem because I don't want these little jump stitches in here that are difficult to trim. Um, I want a bit more control over my jump stitches. So I am in actual fact going to go back and I am going to convert to curves because that'll give me a little bit more control over these individual objects. One other thing I could try would be to edit, break apart. Uh, now I've got my individual objects so I don't have to go back and convert to curves. That's much better. So the before um, the inside of the O and the inside of the E were locked in with the outside of the O and the outside of the E. But now that I've broken apart, so that's in under your edit toolbox. So that's all you need to do. Now we've got our individual objects, we can have a little bit more control over the jump stitches because um, I've got my start and end set to the center. And so what the machine is going to do is it's going to align the hoop with the center and then it's going to start over here stitch right round the end and finish here then it's going to jump over here to the center of the O. The problem then is if, you're, if your machine may well trim but you may well end up with a jump stitch um, underneath this lettering. So if your machine trims that won't be a problem but if you want to be absolutely sure we can fiddle around with the start and end points and the order of the stitching to get a better result and not have to worry about any jump stitches being underneath other objects when they stitch. Um, so what I'm going to do is start with the letter N and go to the reshape tool and I'm going to move my start and end over to this side so that there isn't this huge long jump over here. Now with version 8, when you've got a running stitch, you only have to move the start and the end, if it's a closed object, will follow. So if I move my start, my end will follow to the exact same spot. So we're all good there. Now the next object I want to stitch is the outside of the O. So I'm going to select that. I can see that in the color film and move it up one so that it is stitching after the end and I'm going to go to the reshape tool and I'm okay with that start and finish there. If I zoom in it's not going underneath the stitching so that's okay. The next object I want is the outside of the E so I'm going to find that and I'm going to move that up two objects so that it's stitching straight after the outside of the O. Now its start and end points are over here which is not satisfactory. I want them down the bottom here somewhere. This is entirely personal and up to you how you're going to do this. Um, I'm going to go to the reshape tool and I'm just going to grab that start and bring it down to the lowest point of the E and the end will follow. And then the next object I'm going to stitch is the L so I'm going to select that in the color film and move it up to objects so that it can um, start and finish. I don't want it to jump over the letter before it starts stitching. I would like to actually bring it down to the bottom here. So go to the reshape tool, bring my start and end point down just by bringing the start point down. It doesn't actually matter so long as it's lower than this part. Um, somewhere at the lowest point of the letter. Okay, now I want it to jump back and do the inside of the E, so I'm going to select that. It's the teardrop shaped at the bottom. 
You can see when you're not in true view which one you've selected because it turns pink. I'm just going to move that up one object and as you can see it's going to now jump from the L, go right around that center of the E and then it's going to jump to the O. But it's jumping over part of the O so I'm going to go to the center of the O, reshape that and just bring that start somewhere over this side. Okay. So as I said, if your machine trims, that's not an issue, but if not, that's how you sort out all your start and end points before you can um, save. Save this as a um, art file before you convert to your machine format so that you can always come in and edit. So if I select, click off and go to true view, you can now see your lettering. Now, of course, as I said, if you have a more blocky letter, you could use these outlines as applique. You can change the outline. If I select the N, I could change that to a satin outline. Um, in this case, it's a bit too narrow in parts for an applique, really. But with a different font, you could use that to then go into your applique tool and change it to an applique. I'll undo that. So have fun playing around with that quick little technique and I hope you create some nice projects with it.